Well, we're almost a year into Battle for Azeroth. It's okay. been a pretty eventful one, to say the least. It's been yep. one that's left people with many questions regarding the direction of World of Warcraft and Blizzard. When will the patches come out? What will they contain? What will the next expansion be? And okay. what is the crack with Blizzard's upcoming product slate? All right, that's pretty much it. Yeah, that's what we're wondering. Hey everyone, and welcome back to another Warcraft video. So, the dust has settled on the launch of 8.2, and I think that means we're in a great position to talk about what the future is going to hold for us as WoW players, and also people who are interested in Blizzard. So, we're going okay. to cover the next year of Blizz, what's going to happen with Warcraft, and what's going to happen with the company's other games and IPs. One thing's for certain, it's going to be a pretty wild time, with Legion taking WoW's lore to, um, I guess, sort of anime places, and yeah, uh, it's BFA about right. doing what BFA has done so far. Even for World of Warcraft itself, we're very soon going to see what will dictate the next few years of the game and really the direction of the franchise. So there's a lot to get into. Sadly though, literally scrying into the future isn't possible, but today you will learn how to bend the future to your will through the power of Skillshare, today's sponsor, who are giving you two months of their okay, already free 10 dude. per month service. Okay, dude. free if you click my link. So how are we going to bend I was time so to confused. our will? Well, by being a master of productivity through Productivity Masterclass by popular uh -huh. YouTuber Thomas Frank. It is the single there best course is. on the topic, leaving you with an actionable plan of how to tackle tomorrow. And hey, if you heard okay. our last Skillshare slot, then you'd already... Wow, I'm going to invest in this right now. Go along good idea. with your shiny new plan. Skillshare are an online learning community with over 30,000 courses, and you can get that tasty two-month free trial using my link down below. Just think okay. about it. You can learn a lot in 60 days. So, check them out. A big thank you to Skillshare for supporting this channel, and let's get into the video. Okay, first okay. up, the BlizzCon 2018 that actually happened is pretty darn different from the one that was actually planned at one point. Yeah. And while Blizzard were somehow That's very surprised true. by the backlash that they received for only having a mobile game as the major announcement, many things do point towards that not being their original plan. And it's really worth covering that because it impacts our next year's predictions. Now, Just imagine being the people at Blizzard and as soon as you hear that, oh well, yeah, we're not going to announce Diablo 4, but we're going to announce the phone game, guys. So get hype. Let's get ready and do this. It's going to be great. Based on Kotaku's reporting and my own sources, Diablo 4 was part of the plan for BlizzCon 2018 until relatively late in the day. That much is pretty clear given the reporting on the subject, I believe. And then also there is the case of Overwatch 2, a PvE game that I hear at one point was supposed to be a 2018 announcement, but was pushed back a good bit earlier on. Supposedly, it was being held back in terms of development by dev time being slurped up by another action shooter project. Well, I mean, they've, sp they've spent a long time like trying to develop the whole world of Overwatch and, you know, having all this other shit involved with Overwatch, so it's not a big surprise that Blizzard probably will do something with Overwatch sooner than later that's going to be more large scale. If that's like an Overwatch MMO, that'd be fucking cool, but I'll be honest, guys, I'm not particularly excited for it. I just hope that maybe it'll happen and, you know, hopefully it'll be good. I don't really care a whole lot. We recently, of course, heard from Jason Schreier's yeah, refurbished reporting Titan. Exactly. of the uh, cancelled StarCraft shooter with its team moving over to more surefire projects. Indeed, apparently a mobile game was also cancelled for the same reason. And all of this points towards Overwatch 2 development progress increasing in speed because the project would be getting more development resources. So to me, it's pretty clear why BlizzCon 2018 went south. But from that, we can infer what Blizzard are doing. And indeed, it's what uh, you know, a lot of the corporate end of Activision Blizzard has said they're doing. They're doubling down on their more solid bet games with a focus on actually shipping product. Now, as that was wow. happening, World of Warcraft continued okay. to struggle as Battle for Azeroth's problems revealed themselves to players. But fast forward to the current day, over half a year past that point, and Patch 8.2 has just released. With the Shara's defeat, Blizzard have teased the next big enemy. Like, so, so BFA, last BlizzCon, like, BFA was already out at that point, right? Mm-hmm. So, I, I think with that being the case, like, it, it was, like, the worst point for it to happen. Because at that point, like, everything bad about BFA was already in plain sight. So, people were already talking about how bad the expansion was. And then they finally come out and they announce a few bullshit things for, uh, for the expansion. And they announce a phone game and uh, re-releasing Warcraft 3. It was just absolutely it was the worst timing and like everything kind of lined up to just be fucking awful. 
in a cinematic that did just stop yeah. just short of giving us a full patch 8.3 reveal. And over the last two years, WoW has been teasing a hell of a lot more. The light yeah, having the perfect evil storm. Side, Void having a good side, the interplay yep. between life and death in the Warcraft universe, and then more recently, the larger developments with the dragon lore. So with the raid cleared, that's it for patch 8.2 until the rest of the story happens as people move through their Heart of Azeroth progression. And really that means it's time to predict the future. Legion okay, here we go. put Gamescom on the radar as a convention for WoW fans because it was announced, but Blizzard have announced that they will not have a major presence at Gamescom this year. That's whenever we'll they announced Legion. Game dev reason, so it's a bit sad that Blizz won't be there and I won't get to see their big cool stall. But okay. that does mean that we won't hear anything major from the company till next BlizzCon. But that does not mean that World of Warcraft will be quiet. Indeed, far from it. Okay, here's They've some dates for you. They've got to do 8.3. Patch 8.1.5 was released on the 12th of March, 2019, with 8.2 being revealed through a dev stream on the 11th of April, and it hit... I, I think that they have to do 8.3 before BlizzCon. Like, one way or another, the, it they has to happen, because they have Whoa, to release the new too, raid. Way too no, soon. I know that, but they have to release the new raid, and that way players know what the fuck happens in the new expansion. Because, like, you want it to be, like, at, at BFA, where it just seemed like if... Like, uh, you didn't even know how Legion ended. How... It's like how announcing... Do, it's like announcing... This is oh, go ahead. Tier, right? Sorry. But this is... what is. I mean, this is supposed to be, like... If it had a tier, it would be its own tier, right? How long do tiers usually last? They don't last like fucking, what, three or four months? When, when is BlizzCon? Like November 20s? I don't know. When I don't is BlizzCon? know. It, it's on like, so BlizzCon's in like four months. Oh. Uh, about three months, actually. Yeah, three months for a raid tier see, does seem really, really short. That's, I mean, yeah, that's like fucking fast. Yeah, now that you're saying it, that, that is really, really short. But like, so how how would you reconcile that then? I don't know because like if the leaks are right, then Sylvanas plays a really big role in the Shadowlands, and if they don't explain the role that she plays in the Shadowlands, that's a huge plot point that they don't even talk about with the expansion. So are they gonna do the same thing they did with BFA and Legion, where they just don't explain what happens at the end and players just figure it out? I think it's almost like them announcing. It's like, imagine if they announced like. I don't know how good of an example of this would be, but like, imagine if they announced like Avengers Endgame, like before people saw uh, Infinity War. It, it, I think it would kind of like remove a little bit of the hype and like the excitement for like finishing the current expansion. I mean, I, I don't know anything about cape shit, but I do know that this is an, this is an expansion BlizzCon, right? So they they have to announce they they have to, going by the the formula, right? Well, they did though. Wait, no, they didn't. What do you mean? What do you mean, I mean by they announced it? To, well, they right? announced that they were making another Avengers movie. Like everybody knows that they're announcing an expansion, but they didn't announce what the plot was going to be or anything like that. That's completely different. That's what I'm talking about. But what if I don't? I mean, they could just use BlizzCon as a new, like an explanation of the or a reveal of the patch. They don't have to like. I don't know. So they would reveal the patch and then the new expansion? Maybe, yeah. I, I have no idea, but I don't think Okay. I, I don't know. I don't I don't see eight point three releasing that quickly. That's three months, three or four months. That's way too fast. That's like faster than you in bed. Pretty fast. Okay. Uh let's go. PTR on the 16th of April. So, put simply, PTR kicked off a month after the 8.1.5 release for 8.2. Now, okay. applying those timelines to our current situation, and we'll have patch 8.2.5 hitting the PTR about the end of July, maybe very early August. Right. Now, by that stage, the World First race will be over, and the most active players will have their uh, Pathfinder, and basically they'll have completed most of the 8.2 content. They'll be done and with the mean, content. It'll be a fantastic time for Blizzard to whet people's appetite and release a bit more. More info for the game. So yes, that means our next major news milestone is just around the corner. Okay. Now, 825 is going to be, I believe, quite large, as I covered in last week's video. Given the hanging plot threads of the Horde Rebellion and Azoth, it's going to have to set up a lot of things. It's going to have to resolve the more immediate things, and also just give us some hints for the more far-flung plot lines. So it could be a resolution of the faction conflict and a setup of the actual battle for Azeroth, us versus Nazoth. It could be teasing the Dragon Isles. It could be revealing them as an 8-3 zone either way these plot threads i hope if they do the dragon isles that it's an entire expansion theme right it's not just like a end of expansion zone 
Like, I feel like the Dragon Isles have been something that people have wanted ever since Vanilla WoW. And I want it to be fucking badass. I want them to spend as much time on it as they spend on new content for an expansion. Uh, that, that's my opinion on it. Are likely to all receive attention, especially the Faction Rebellion. Mm -hmm. This, after all, will be the patch that sets up the patch that will prompt the next expansion, and it will reveal lore that essentially will define the next few years of the game moving forward. So with that hitting PTR in the next three weeks and nothing happening at Gamescom, what's right. next for Blizz? Well, presumably the release of patch 8.2.5. Now, okay. 8.1 launched on December 11th, while 8.1.5 launched on March 12th. So if 8.25 is following the Legion timings of patches, it'll launch about the 10th of September, but if it's following BFA timings, maybe more late September or very early October. Now, it's war campaign, of course. We'll see Thalysra and Lorthamar probably join up with Bane, Thrall, and Sarfang. We'll probably see Vol'jin's spirit return. We'll maybe get a bit yep. more of our good friend Bomb Samdi. Oh, it boy. will likely cover the teased plotline. The Jamaican Lich King. Like, I I'm sorry, but I like Bon Swambi, but he's basically the Jamaican Lich King. Like, I... <sighs> I, I, I don't know. It just seems a little bit ridiculous to me. Like, patch 8.3, I'm going to be honest, guys. I'm not that excited to do Siege of Orgrimmar again. Ooh. I'm just not. What about this? Well, go ahead. What do you, th what do you think about, I mean, they brought Vol'jin back, right? And they didn't finish they did. his, uh, they didn't finish his storyline, right? So he's got to, he's got to play a part in this too. And he's probably, he's been dead for a long time. So he probably knows all the, all the good shit about the Shadowlands and all that fucking bullshit, right? So he could, he could play a part in it just like Sylvanas could. And that could be revealed in 8.3 as well. Right. That is a big true. That actually, that is a big true. Okay. All right. I'll I'll, I'll go with that. You haven't done the Tauren Heritage Charm. Well, well, let me go the rest of this. Originally, of Thrall traveling around with Vol'jin's ashes. Of course, that didn't happen in 8.0. And yeah. uh, just generally, they'll need to follow up on the Vol'jin plotline because that has lingered for a little while. Date-wise, I think this is all going to go down a month before BlizzCon. Even if Blizzard do a little content gating, chances are it'll all be out before the con, leaving us quite clear to discuss the future of World of Warcraft. Okay. All right, so BlizzCon then. BlizzCon 2019 takes place on Friday the 1st of November, and it's going so to be First. One of the largest ones Shit. yet. And look, Blizz have had a okay. rough year. Stagnant projects, slow development, morale destroying, layoffs, cancelled projects. Not and good. That's all off the back of, well, 2018 being pretty rough. They had a PR thrashing. BlizzCon 2019 is their big chance to turn this boat around, and I think they're going to go all out. Nothing. I feel like, yeah, if they don't have something that's just going to completely just blow people's dicks off at this BlizzCon, people are going to be kind of like, okay, like, what's going on here? I, I, yeah, this is the Blizzard Redemption. This is the, the stage is set for the Blizzard Redemption arc. If they come out and they say, listen, here's the new expansion. It's fucking badass. Here's Diablo 4. It's good. Here's a uh, fucking, like, Overwatch 2, like, FPS MMO. Surprise, motherfucker, right? I mean, like, these types of things would... Like, that's exactly what everybody wants. Everybody wants to see all three of those things this BlizzCon. Like, I, I have very, very high expectations. I'll say that for sure. I have very sure. high expectations. Go ahead. I'd just let them... I, I, I mean, I'd be happy with Diablo 2, like, uh, updated. An updated so version of Diablo 2? Yeah, dude, that was fun game. It was a fun game, but I want a new game. Like I don't nah. need a I don't need a new version of an old game. You just go play nah, the old game. I'll take a D two remaster. Oh, I don't know why you don't have both. I mean, like a remaster shouldn't take the place of a new game. I think it should do both of them, if anything. I well, mean, there's no you're reason right. not to. You're right, but this is Blizzard, right? So they're remastering all their old games because they can't come up with any good new shit. Yeah, that's so true. I'll take a D two. Yeah. Oh, well, Classic WoW, I, I think it's kind of the same thing, right? It's like if you were to ask a lot of like the current WoW players and the people that were like invested in the game, what would they want? Would they want a new expansion or would they want Classic WoW? I think most people would probably want a new expansion that's as good as Classic WoW. They, they don't want to play the same game over again. They want to play a game that's as good as the game used to be. That's what I think it really is. It, it, and so it's not, that's not contradictory at all.
True. Yeah, people don't want classic WoW again. They do, right? But they don't. What they really want more than that is a game that makes them feel the same way that classic WoW used to make them feel. And you can't do that by re-releasing the same thing. You have to do something new, something to give people that sense of wonder, or amazement. They don't no fucking idea what's what's happening. Uh, give them a new world, a new thing to explore, etc. That's what players really want. Uh, not not just classic WoW. Classic WoW is going to be great, but it's kind of like it's a symptom and not necessarily the disease if that makes sense i don't know if it really how good of an analogy that is but it, it's much deeper than that is confirmed of course the announcements have not happened but if diablo 4 was planned for blizzcon 2018 and yes. overwatch 2 at one point was planned for blizzcon 2018 let's be real there's a good chance we'll see both be announced. At the very least, one of them will be, and if there is to be one, it would be Diablo 4. It's I fucking to hope so. Watch too, because Holy we do know shit. Less about that project, although it's fairly possible that uh, it could be mentioned. So, potentially both, definitely one. But what about World of Warcraft? Well, I think that's where things get a bit more interesting because of the dates. World of Warcraft expansions tend to be announced yeah. two years apart, like clockwork, but something yep. has happened this time that's not happened in quite a while. It seems like the next expansion will be revealed before we've got our hands on the current expansion's final patch. Pretty yeah. wild, a bit awkward, isn't it? But there's yeah. not much else that Blizz can do because the next viable announcement date would be what? Gamescom 2020? Now the thing is, Legion released August 16, BFA released August 18. Their plan seems to be to just have an expansion every two years. And uh I'm fine with that, right? I'm okay with them doing expansions more often, a little bit, like every two years is okay. Uh, you know, if Legion had been a little bit longer, that would have been fine. But that's more because I like Legion more than a lot of the other expansions. Uh, I, I don't really know. I mean, like, it would be okay if they did that and they just kept releasing new ones. But I do think they should conclude the story before they announce the next expansion. Because I think that it takes people's mind off of the current story. And that, that's not really good for the game. I don't think. Have decently, uh, you know, spread out patch coverage uh, during the expansions. Now, okay. taking all of this into account and the fact that they will need a robust beta testing period, and I think we are locked into a BlizzCon announcement this they year. They have to announce now, it at BlizzCon. this is not the they first have to. time a situation like this has happened. Far from it. If you look back... Like, people are coming back for 8.2. Like, whenever I go into, like, uh, like Najdatar or uh, Mechagon or something, the zones are always full. Like, there's tons of people in the zones. A lot of people are playing 8.2, but they're not really going to get those people coming back to the game unless they announce an expansion. If they announce an expansion, people will come back and play BFA because they're looking forward to the next expansion. So even if Blizzard, like, they have to announce an expansion of BlizzCon, like, one way or another. I would be amazed if they didn't. Back into the past, Cataclysm was announced before patch 3.3 released. Yep. Mesa Pandaria was announced before patch 4.3 was released. So it doesn't seem too crazy that WoW's next expansion will be unveiled before 8.3 is released. I didn't even now, know given that. given the likely timings of patch 8.2.5 though, one has to wonder when will 8.3 be announced? Now that really is the big question. Will right. we have a developer announcement stream like what we got for 8.2, maybe a week or two or three before BlizzCon, and then have BlizzCon video. be focusing on the new expansion? That could make some sense, but there might be a bit of a problem here. The next expansion is going to be seen to be moving away from the problems of Battle for Azeroth. Now, that might be counter to, say, the marketing uh... of Patch 8.3, which still will be Battle for Azeroth. Like 8.2, I think it will be Battle for Azeroth, but with a lot of really good improvements, but it still will be BFA. So that marketing might be a bit awkward for Blizzard, but I'm not really sure what else they can do. And generally, I imagine they just want as much WoW hype as possible. And if people are hyped for 9 point zero they'll probably try 8.3 there it is see Bellier said the exact same fucking thing that i'm saying because it's you know why he's saying that because it's true like as soon as they announced bfa tons of people came back to legion because they were thinking to themselves oh shit new expansions coming out i better play everything in the current expansion before they take it out of the game so people mm -hmm. were getting their mage tower appearances people were getting ahead of the curve they were getting the mount you know they were getting the violet spell wing whatever the fuck this is exactly the way that it works and if blizzard announces an expansion it will help bfa because people will come back and play bfa in anticipation for the next expansion
The only issue is that if BFA, if the storyline of BFA leads into the next expansion, it's going to be a bit of an awkward retelling. Like, for example, imagine if you do, if they announced like Warlords of Draenor and they played the cinematic and it had Garrosh in the cinematic before you knew what was going to happen at the end of Siege of Orgrimmar, you're going to assume that Garrosh doesn't die and then it just kind of removes a little bit of the suspense and storytelling, right? And so I don't know exactly how they're going to handle that. They could just kind of keep Sylvanas out of the storyline if she does end up being part of the Shadow. Shadow, Shadowlands expansion, if that's even what's going to happen. Now, this is especially challenging for Blizz because of how well storytelling is very different these days. You see, Deathwing and Arthas were disconnected. Yes. Deathwing and Pandas disconnected. Yes. But in Modern WoW, the expansions flow into each other a lot more directly. The end of Wad led us straight into Legion, the end of Legion straight yep. into BFA. So it could be that knowing the next expansion would spoil elements of the patch 8.3 storyline. I don't think that the Legion, like Legion and BFA are completely unrelated. Like there is simply one event that caused them to get connected, which is the sword, like in, in the, the earth. But you can explain like the whole storyline of BFA, almost the whole storyline of BFA without any context of Legion. And it's going to make just as much sense. The big fucking sword. Yeah, one big event. You're right. So you just don't talk about that event. You still talk about Gahoon. You still talk about, you know, having the Zandalari and the Kul Tirans be involved. You don't need to have the Legion events be a catalyst for those things to occur. You can talk about Queen Ashara being involved. People have wanted that forever. And there's not necessarily a guaranteed Tidestone stolen. Well, you don't have to say that she stole the Tidestone. That's not the only way that Queen Ashara could exist in the storyline. So, I mean, I don't see that being an issue. Uh, with BFA and Legion, I feel like the stories were pretty disconnected. Uh, minus basically the sword leading us into events that caused the events of BFA. And so you could announce BFA before Legion and there was no real confusion. Now you might be wondering, why is this predicament arose? Well, yeah. as I covered in a video a while back, in terms of relative timings, patch 8.2 is closer to the timing of Legion 7.3. I mean, yeah, it's a bit wild, but Blizz are months behind schedule. Now, in order to get a better yep. handle of this, let's just work out a likely 8.3 release. So, assuming Legion timings of 77 days and a late September 8.2.5 release, we're looking at like December 10th release date, which is almost the same, oddly enough, as patch 8.1, and right. uh, say, for a direct comparison, comparison Cataclysm's 8.3 or Wrath's 3.3. Ultimately, there's no two ways about it. Blizzard are going to have to spoil a little bit of patch 8.3 in order to reveal the next expansion. Although it is worth noting yeah. that by the time BlizzCon rolls around, chances are 8.3 will be there uh, on the PTR. It will be datamined. A lot of, you know, yeah. a lot of the info will be that's, out. That's true. So the marketing yeah. messages might be a bit confusing, but I think... It's the same as people found out about, uh, you know, Ashara not dying. Like, we looked at the, uh, like, her, her death animation and she wasn't dead. Everybody was like, yeah, she's not dead. And so whenever the expand, whenever the, the raid came out and she didn't die, people were like, wow, what a surprise. We already knew this was going to happen for anybody who cared. One thing is for certain, I'll be pretty busy. It'll be a hectic time yep. for WoW content creation. And that probably means a lot of people will have a lot of things to talk about. And World of Warcraft as a general interest topic will probably be at a peak. In yep. terms of sidestepping the awkwardness, maybe Blizzard could have it so the next expansion doesn't directly follow on from Battle for Azeroth. Maybe Battle for Azeroth is setting up the 10.0 looming threat. And maybe 9.0 is very much us doing something else. To be honest, I wouldn't mind a bit of a fresh break. But yes. A expansion reveal at BlizzCon, plus a big tease of 8.3, which I think will likely come out a month after BlizzCon, and uh, Blizzard probably starting Season 4 of Battle for Azeroth after the holidays, so in 2020. I think Blizzard will likely want the next expansion to launch around August 2020, but it could be bumped a month or two because of their development uh, issues. Now, combine that with how... That's kind of crazy for me to think that, like, in a year from now, we're going to be almost about to play the next expansion. Because it's almost August, and, like, a year from now, like, we'd have the new fucking expansion? Holy shit. Like... One year left of BFA. I genuinely think that if Blizzard tones down some of the dumb shit that they've been doing, like with Titan forging, with having LFR gear replace previous tiers, etc., if they just remove a few things like that, I think the game would actually not be shit. I don't think it's shit now, but it's not very rewarding. It's it's not good. So we'll see what they're gonna do with this next expansion. 
but uh there are things that they could do to make the game actually good it's shit now class design well i mean that will get better over time the reason why class design is bad is because classes are designed from a reductive standpoint so you're removing things from the classes and deciding which things stay so the classes are basically being redesigned from a standpoint that's going to be fundamentally like less abilities and everything like that than we originally had in legion so it makes sense that people won't like class design it's the same reason why people didn't like it in wad and then whenever legion came out it was great because wad or sorry legion built off of wad whereas wad was reductive from mists of pandaria so i fully expect the next expansion class design to be completely fine because they're actually going to be adding new abilities rather than just taking them away they seemingly are aware that BFA beta really bit them in the ass, and I think they're going to be wanting to do a robust beta testing process, so they'll want that really as early into 2020 as they can possibly do it. Now, they may do an 8.3.5 patch, but I do imagine it will be quite small, meaning that the live version of World of Warcraft will be left in its 8.3 state for quite a while. Although, in fairness, a January to August uh, wait that also has, you know, a pre-patch and all of that stuff, yeah. well, that would be a shorter final patch to next expansion gap than uh, really any time in recent memory. It actually could be that the initial patch delays of Battle for Azeroth will have ended up giving us a more evenly spaced out expansion. So there you go. That's the next year of World of Warcraft. If Blizzard manage to create a more evenly spread out patch cycle then between that the existence of classic and the 9.0 beta world of warcraft as a just topic for people to be interested in as you know where stuff's happening it's not going to experience much of a lull certainly a smaller lull of the mists of pandaria the warlord to draenor transition which i mean man doing content for that was real slow 14 fucking months we spent in that goddamn siege of orgamar holy fuck man it was so bad i loved it, it i loved it no come on dude yeah, dude I Dude, I, you're just saying this because you hated Mop overall. No, I had Biss gear, dude. I had full Mythic Warforge gear. How can you say that? Because you didn't like the expansion. If you I didn't like give a fuck. I, like I didn't like Siege. the theme, but I still had something to do. I mean, like, no, Mr. Pandora, the end of Mr. Pandora, there's tons of shit fun. to do. It was like, it ah, was fun. It was too long, man. Give me a fucking break. Like, Throne of Thunder shouldn't have ended so quick, and neither should have Tier 14. They should have spaced those out more, and then have Siege of Orgrimmar last for a appropriate amount of time, which is not more than a year. Like, do you really think, that, did they cut Throne of Thunder short? Uh, yeah. Yes. Did they cut tier 14 short? Which one was that? Shah of Fear. Mogushin Vaults. Heart of Fear. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they cut it short. Like, they, they shouldn't have done that. That was a fucking mistake. Like, all, all they needed to do. 14 months and no new content. Yeah, they added a new PvP season. That's how bad it was. They added two PvP seasons inside of that, and they tried to make people think that they were, uh, you know, still moving forward. Especially tier 14 was cut short. Yeah, we barely got cutting edge that tier. It was fucking hard. And there were two raids for tier 14. Actually, Samurai Jack, Jake, um, there were three. Mogush and Vaults, A Heart of Fear, and uh, Terrace of the Eternal Spring. But, doesn't matter. The point that I'm making is that I, I do hope that I think that the last raid tier in the, in an expansion should last the longest though. McConnell, you're right about that because that's whenever all of the content is relevant. So people are going to come back. They're going to have tons of things to do. That's whenever generally class design for the expansion is at its best. That's whenever gearing is at its best. That's when our players are the most OP. And so I do think in terms of the like blocks of time, the biggest block of time should be the last patch. Okay. But there you go, I think it's going to be an action-packed year. Now, there is one assumption that I'm making here, that WoW Classic will not impact the timings of live. Because, of course, it is true they're made by separate teams. Yep. But it's also possible that Blizzard will use the phases of Classic to buy a little bit more time for the live development team, and that could slow things down a little bit. As for the other things, well, for Diablo 4 and Overwatch 2, I expect them to come out anywhere between nine months and two years after their announcements. We do know the Blizzard feel burned in the past by by announcing projects too early, so I think more than ever we're going to hear about these two games relatively close to their launch dates when a lot of their just development is kind of locked in and done. 
Diablo 4's first incarnation died in 2016, and that does mean that its second version will have been in development for nearly three years now, making a 2020, maybe a late 2020 release window seem a little bit more feasible. Maybe Overwatch 2 will be like 2021 or something like that. But anyway, there you Gives go. I think that's what's going to happen with the next year of Blizzard Entertainment. I think it's going to be an interesting time, especially seeing how they deal with this next expansion reveal and the design intent that will be driving it. So there you go. I really enjoyed making this video. I just doing these hypotheticals, you know, getting the calendar out, working out the relative dates. That's all a lot of fun to me. So I'd love to hear what are you looking forward to in Blizzard Future lineup? What are you concerned about? What do you think they're going to do? And uh, yeah, do you think I'm on the money here or do you think I am totally wrong? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Thank you very much for watching this video. And with that, I will see you next time. Bye. Okay, my Overwatch hype is about a 3 out of 10. My Diablo hype is a 7 out of 10. And my WoW hype is a 9 out of 10. That's basically the way that I'm looking at things.